Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLaughlin and I'm feeling a bit better than I was, so thank you for all the good wishes. This is number 20 in my videos about awful arguments by trans activists. And this one comes up a surprising amount, given that it falls into that category of arguments that I file under burningly stupid. You know, there are degrees of stupid, and this is at the roasting hot end of the scale. So what exactly is the argument? Well, there isn't one really, but if there were one, it would look something like this, I suppose. Firstly, you are using the excuse that some men are predatory, violent sex offenders to stop them entering female-only spaces. Secondly, but predatory, violent, sex-offending women also exist. Therefore, it makes no sense to stop men from entering women's spaces. Now, I expect that anyone who comes out with that question, what about predatory females, would, on seeing their argument laid out like that, deny that that is their argument. But what else are we to make of this question, if not that? What else could their point be? Obviously, in the first premise and the conclusion, they would use the term trans women instead of men. But since they have yet to explain why those they call trans women are any different from any other men, we can disregard that. From the perspective of users of female spaces, they are all men, and we can't know which ones are safe and okay to be around and which ones aren't. Here is a recent example from Twitter. Somebody is defending billionaire JK Rowling saying she isn't pushing for predatory men to be in women-only spaces. And somebody responds with, but she is pushing for predatory women to be in women's spaces in the name of single-sex space. Excuse me, but could you tell me where these so-called predatory women are supposed to go if not into women-only spaces? Asking for a friend. Since you labelled all male body predatory, it's safe to label all female body predatory too. Okay, it's a common tactic to pretend that pointing out that some men are violent and predatory equates to labelling all trans-identifying men as violent and predatory, which is very dishonest and designed to put feminists on the defensive. The same point in a slightly different form came up a few days ago on this channel from someone called Sunny the Kit Kat. Before I show you that comment, I must just show you the first comment this individual made. Your entire argument banks on trans women not being women, you jackass. <laughs> well, duh, you totally got me there. And I suppose you've got the slam dunk counter argument that show exactly how men can be women, right? Bring it. And while we're waiting, no one at all is saying that trans women don't do bad things, but I'm sure the percentages of violent trans women balance out with cis women and cis men. Your little montage at the end does nothing. Actually, that montage at the end, which is this one, I'll link below, is a demonstration of my point that trans-identifying men are no different from other men. Some are violent criminals, and there are many more violent male criminals than there are female ones. I'd also like to dispense with some strange comments that were made below um, a video I made a few weeks ago in which I reported on an assault of a friend of mine in Manchester. Someone called David Young. This is the first comment of his I saw. You can hide from it as much as you like, Peak Trans, but it's not going to disappear. I was totally mystified by this opening sentence. I had no idea what he was referring to. If women think their own violence towards others doesn't count as real violence... What? <laughs> Again, who said that violence committed by women doesn't count as real violence? Certainly not me, and I don't know anybody who has suggested that. 
then anyone who believes they are a woman is going to regard their violent behavior towards you as authorized. Okay, there is some crazy reasoning going on here that I'm not going to waste time trying to unpack. Perhaps if women had made an effort to get their own house in order over the previous decades, trans nutters rude, would have more difficulty in justifying their behavior. Do better next time. He sounds like a total crackpot, doesn't he? He seems to be saying that if only women had behaved better, men who claim to be women would behave better. So it's all our fault, really. So what's new? In spite of all that, I was really intrigued by his comment and I asked him to be more specific, but I told him not to accuse me of hiding anything. I didn't know what he meant by that, but it feels like being accused of dishonesty and that is the total opposite of what I am about. So his next comment was, why are there campaigns against male violence towards women and girls as if Male violence is a different violence from anybody else's. Anybody else's meaning female violence? Well, the thing is, David, that violent crime is overwhelmingly committed by men. When it comes to sexual offences, at least 90% of sexual offenders are men and the majority of their victims, the victims of sexual crimes, are women and children. Male violence is a far far bigger problem than female violence. Of course, the vast majority of victims of male violence are other men, and men are absolutely free to campaign against violence against them by men or by women. The reason women campaign against male violence is because it is so often inflicted on us for no other reason than that we are women. It is a means of control which keeps many women in a state of fear and vulnerability. Hope that helps. The fact that you have deleted two comments drawing attention to this is certainly hiding it. I don't appreciate being accused of deleting comments from my channel. I think most of us commenting on YouTube know that even the most innocuous comments disappearing on any channel is something that can happen to any of us for no obvious reason. It happens to me on my own channel. This is about YouTube's lousy algorithms and I live in hope that it gets sorted eventually. But one thing I would never do is delete a comment just because I don't like it or because I disagree with it. Why would I when I have so much fun making video responses? Okay, let me tell you something about violent women. I spent most of the 1990s working with victims of all kinds of different crimes, including male victims of female violence. Of all the hundreds of victims of violence whose accounts I listened to, male victims of female violence were fewer than 1%. But I absolutely believed that the problem was much wider spread than was known, and this has subsequently been confirmed by research. But just as most female victims of sexual assault don't report to anyone, the same is true of male victims of female violence. I am not talking now about women who hit back at men who've been violent to them first. Those men didn't come to us for advice. The men I heard from were victims of unprovoked violence by their partners, Without wishing to make light of the hell these men were being put through by the constant verbal abuse and physical assaults from the women they lived with, the mothers of their children, and this tended to be the reason why these men remained in relationships, because they didn't want to leave their kids with a woman who was evidently having some kind of mental breakdown but was refusing to seek help, but the nature of the violence was in every single case I heard of more minor than the kinds of things violent men do to their female partners. This isn't surprising given that women are typically smaller and weaker than their husbands and boyfriends. So slaps, being pummeled, having a hot cup of tea thrown at him just after he'd made it for her. Horrible things to have to live with day after day, but 
I'm not even going to tell you about the violence I've seen women endure from the men in their lives. Two to three women a week in this country are violently killed in domestic situations. From The Independent, male violence remains a more serious phenomenon. Men proved more likely than women to injure their partners. Female aggression tends to involve pushing, slapping and hurling objects, yet men made up nearly 40% of the victims in the cases that he studied, a figure much higher than previously reported. I'll link to that 20-year-old article below. Its title, Women Are More Violent Says Study, is very misleading. As the article points out, women are more likely to lash out, but they do less damage. Anyway, I said all that to make it plain that I am not in any kind of denial about the fact that some women are capable of violence even against men and not only in self-defense. Though insofar as they are violent at all, they are far more likely to be violent against other women. Drunken girls at nightclubs sometimes get into fights as do vulnerable, depressed and angry women prisoners. And no doubt the same is true of residents of hostels and domestic violence refuges. What is far harder to find data on is women who sexually assault other women and girls. And yet this is at the root of this particular argument, which gets made quite a lot by cultists. And obviously they are talking about predatory lesbians here. It's somewhat ironic that from the same playbook comes the oft-repeated claim that saying trans-identifying men are a risk in women's spaces is exactly the same as what they used to say about gay men and lesbians. Here's Stonewall UK, as usual, in denial that being transgender is absolutely nothing like being gay. I mentioned Josie Kay in a recent video, one of the dumbest trolls to ever post on my channel. And she said this, what would you say about a cis female predator in a female only changing room? To which I replied, nothing, it's a non sequitur. I was hoping she'd try a bit harder to make her question relevant, to actually frame it as an argument, but she didn't. And this is normal from the genderists. It's like they're not quite sure what point they're trying to make and that they shouldn't need to put any thought into the argument. They want you to do all the work. So she came back with, what? I was asking that question in regards to the predators in women's spaces. What you are saying is, if it's a female predator, then it doesn't matter? I thought you wanted to protect women and children. Or are you in denial that cisgender people can be predators too? Goodness me, talk about putting words into my mouth. Let's unpack this one. Forget the cisgender nonsense. By cisgender, obviously she means those who don't claim to be transgender, which is the vast majority of the population. And obviously most predators are drawn from that population, the non-trans population, if you like. Equally, obviously, most predators are drawn from the roughly half of that population who are male. Female sex offenders are rare, and I have yet to hear of one who's been caught indulging in the modern day phenomenon of using smartphones or other small recording devices to film women using public toilets or getting undressed in changing rooms. Plenty of women have reported incidents of sexual assault in changing rooms that aren't sex segregated, but I couldn't find any records of a woman ever having been sexually assaulted by another woman in a changing room, in a public toilet or a refuge. Maybe when you've grown up and been around the block, Josie, you will realize that male and female sexuality, regardless of sexual orientation, are somewhat different. Here's another one from Twitter. I just want to ask every turf who posts mugshots trying to push the predator narrative. Pushing the predator narrative means drawing attention to the fact that some men, including some of those who claim to be women, abuse women. 
we do get drawn into making this point time and time again when there is a more fundamental reason for not wanting men in our spaces, which is this one. On the basis of the comfort and dignity of girls and women, I'm asking you, telling you, please do not use women's spaces. My That's it. Predatory or simply voyeuristic men do cause problems for women, but we shouldn't need to make that case when the simple truth is that we feel uncomfortable having men we don't know around us when we are in a state of semi-undress. So I want to ask TERFs what they think about the extremely common societal trope of cis women teachers preying on students. Well, I don't know about extremely common. I realise it happens from time to time, and I think it's disgusting. It's an abuse of the trust we place in those adults who have chosen and trained to work professionally with children and young people. It's an abuse of the power those women have over their students, and it's unconscionable. Now, what's your point? What does that particular phenomenon have to do with not wanting men in women's toilets, changing rooms, refuges and prisons. Nothing, but thanks for the red herring, it was delicious. The final example of the most extraordinary stupidity arising from that point about violent or predatory women was addressed to me by some troll calling himself Kelly J. Clown Shoes whom I was having a bit of a Barney with on Getter. Am I happy for this woman to share a changing room around children? The woman being Vanessa George, Britain's most notorious child abuser, absolutely evil and depraved. What on earth did he expect me to say? Yeah, totally happy. I can only guess that his point was again, that it's not only men who do terrible things, women do them too, but you can't keep them out of your spaces, so gotcha, idiot. In fact, he couldn't even articulate his point when I asked him. Instead, he came back with, are you happy to let Gail Newland into changing rooms? It's only trans people you obsess over. The story of Gail Newland is one of the weirdest crime stories I've ever read. It beggars belief, but basically she disguised herself as a man and sexually molested a woman who was a very close friend of hers, and she was convicted. Why would I be concerned about her using a women's changing room. If this story is true, she is basically a head case who betrayed the trust of a vulnerable friend. She didn't use force or violence. What do you imagine she's going to do in a women's changing room full of women she doesn't know? However vile a woman's behaviour in her private life, they don't usually commit male typical crimes in publicly used female-only spaces. We have no need to fear them and Unlike most men, Newland probably isn't taller and stronger than most women, so if she tried something funny in a changing room, she'd probably get a slap. So my answer to people who ask that dumb question, what about predatory women, would be, firstly, that predatory violent lesbians and female child molesters are extremely rare and women generally don't commit male typical crimes. Secondly, when they do commit sexual assaults like Vanessa George and Gail Newland and all those teachers, they use cunning and stealth and manipulation of people they know rather than strength and brute force against strangers. So toilets and changing rooms, which are the only single sex spaces most women use in their lifetimes, are safe for women as long as they remain single sex. Thirdly, most women are more evenly matched physically than are women compared to men. A typical woman is far less likely to be able to physically overpower another typical woman than a man is. And fourthly, this is just the dumbest argument ever, so shut up. Thanks for watching. Bye.